Hi there, welcome to this course on data science and machine learning using Microsoft Azure. My name is Harshit and I am instructor for this class. Here in this course, I would be teaching you lessons on data science with Power BI along with my co-instructor Pranjal who would be covering computer vision and text analysis using Azure machine learning. Here in this course, you would be learning various concepts and lessons such as creating visualization charts uh, such as bar chart, pie chart, ring chart, tree map, got chart, map chart and others. Moreover, you would also learn about creating interactive business intelligence report, uh, applying drill down mechanisms on table, matrix and other things. You would also learn to create a scatter plot and create an animation playback of your charts. Then you will learn about using a power query for data cleaning and other operations where you will learn about operations such as row deletion, column split, replacing values and much more. Moreover, you would also learn about creating advanced BI reports using Python frameworks such as matplotlib to create various kinds of charts. Here you would also learn about machine learning lessons such as computer vision for image analysis or object detection. You would learn about text analysis for finding sentiment, detecting the language of a person, uh, finding key phrases, entities and much more. So if you are curious to learn these skills for data science and machine learning, we start learning right now. See you in the class. Hi friend, welcome to this lesson where you are going to learn about creating a bar chart in Power BI. So let's start with this. We are going to just create a simple bar chart and for that we need a data set. So just go to get data and choose a format that you have. Here I am using an Excel file. So we will be importing this Excel file for grocery price data set. Uh, just se select this table and hit the load option if you want to load otherwise you can go to transform for changing the values of the columns and so on. You are learning this thing in the later exercise. So here uh, we got this data set and here we got three different columns and we can go to the visualizations to create a chart. So on the first row we got all the stack, stacked, clustered, bar chart and column charts. So just select any one. Here I am just using a stacked bar chart and just uh, move the values to different values say date to axis uh, move product column to legend and then price to values so here we got three data points so this just create a, a simple bar chart here we got four different bars um, and we can change it to represent based on a different time frame say on the annual basis we got one chart on the quarterly basis we got two charts and for the monthly basis if you want to represent you can get this thing and there are four different bars and different colors and the light blue the dark blue orange and the violet each representing different category of values or the legions you can go to the format tab to change a few values say if you want to change the value of legion you can increase the size of legion simply to make them visible to your audience so here we got four different products bread grapes milk and oranges so we got the price data of these four food products uh, distributed over month and we can see uh, the price change of each product uh, the simple bar chart so we can sh simply note here the price of the milk has been increasing over the past few months and the price of oranges have gradually dropped so the oranges are cheaper in the later months and the milk is more expensive so we can decide more things here we can change the title as well just write the price variation over time you can edit the title you can change the values you got multiple formatting options just go through them if you want to change the colors of uh, individual bars you can change say if you want to change the color of bread to 
lighter tone of blue or say any different color uh, yellow green purple anything like that you can change the color of grapes uh, anything any category say change the color of milk to pink uh, change the color of oranges to yellow you can change anything just make oranges in the orange color and change the color of uh, say grapes to a different color you can change the value of individual colors you can change the size for the text you can change the data colors you can change uh, different formatting options you got you got x axis y axis with the different charts you got uh, different kinds of formatting options say a pie chart may have a different formatting option than a bar chart and so on so you got a, a variety of charts and bar chart would be the first thing that you should try to create it simply represents uh, four different categories and the price change over the time frame so bar chart is very useful so this is how you can create a simple bar chart if you have a data in different sources say web data you can use uh, you learning this thing in the coming lessons you will also learn about importing other data sets you can use a database you can use the uh, csv files you can use a live data from the web that i mentioned you will be learning to create uh, different charts uh, pie charts tables tree maps funnel chart scatter plot and other charts so this is how you create a simple bar chart just try to create this thing on your own keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a line chart in power bi so let's start with this let us first uh, create a line chart using a visualization tab and just use uh, the columns from the sheets here i'm just dropping a date column to the axis product to legends and price to values so price are the measures that are in numerical values you can find the sigma sign between that column and you can drop it into the values tab and here we got this simple line chart we can go to the format tab and go to some other options like data labels and we can change the size of this line we can change the size of the text we can perform multiple edits like uh, we can go to the shapes and just change it from the solid line to a dashed line or a dotted line so if you want a dashed line you can use it to change uh, the shapes of your line or you can use a dotted line to change the value of your dotted line otherwise just keep it uh, solid if you want a straight line without any spaces or dots okay so sometimes you want a projection you may have different columns and you want a different kind of projection you want a dotted line as well as a a solid line you can use it you can change the stroke width you can either increase it to have a solid stroke you can decrease it you can change other values you can make it a step so when there is a change of value your line chart will form as a step otherwise it will be constant parallel to x axis but uh, line charts are generally defined with its slopes so if you want to have a slope line chart you can set it default and turn the step option off otherwise if you want to show in the step manner it will be a new kind of visualization for some people uh, who just don't want a simple line chart they want to add some step maybe you may want to add a bar chart or some more insights you can just use a step chart you can change the title you can change uh, other text the colors uh, the legends and anything else just uh, say increase the size of the title because by default it is quite small you can make it large edit the title you can write your own text you can just do any other edits so this is how you can create a line chart uh, just go to the format tabs for multiple options say uh, here uh, we got a uh, step option and uh, with the sh different shapes that we can identify uh, this option was not available in the bar chart or the pie chart because a bar chart cannot have a step bar 
okay each individual bar is a different thing and step functionality is only available in the line charts so in the format tab of different charts you will have different options say here it is um, you have to practice by creating multiple charts of different kind and just refer to different formatting options you will learn how to format each individual charts and this is how you can read a chart uh, when you uh, just hover around to the chart uh, with the tooltip if you want to add a tooltip you can also drop something to the tooltip otherwise uh, it will just generate the default values and here you see this thing and this is how you create a simple line chart for some data you don't want to represent it with a bar chart you can represent it with a line chart or a different chart so here we have just taken the same data set created one bar chart and one line chart and now you can decide which chart you want to use for your visualization in some scenarios bar chart would be better sometimes line chart would be better you can use a combination of more charts or create your own custom charts in power bi just keep learning and keep moving ahead Hey, welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a pie chart in power bi so let's start with this here let us just uh, import a data set here i'm just importing a billing data set in the excel file and just hit the load button when you want to load the data so it consists of multiple columns with different uh, data values and we'll be using some of them to create a pie chart so just go to the top visualization tab and here you can see a small icon for pie chart just single click it to create this chart once it is created you can expand it and just start dropping the values so here let's drop a product category into legends because it will be represented into categorical forms next use a measure such as order quantity and drop it into the values you can take profit or other numerical value that are represented with a sigma sign here i'm just simply using the order quantity you can add more information into tooltips and detail sections otherwise just go to the format tab to format different things here let's uh, change the font or you can change the font size say increase the font size of the product categories you can change the font how they are represented sometimes uh, if you are creating a visualization you may uh, require to have a singular kind of formatting standards that way you can use otherwise uh, you can use the default power bi fonts if it doesn't matter to you also if you are using in a different language other than english you can use a font type for that language like uh, Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Chinese, Mandarin, Japanese, uh, Arabic or a different language of your choice you can use a different formatting next uh, you can change uh, the label positions uh, you can go to the details tab and change the size of the detail text say here uh, we got the label position we can uh, just change the position by default it is represented outside the pie chart you can see uh, the numerical values the percentage and we can just make it uh, appear inside so just go to the label position and you can change it to represent inside outside anywhere you want you can increase the size of the label and how it is presented so this is how if we have a big pie chart it is better to use the inside tab you can also change the label uh, style what information is represented say if you want to show only percentage you can show the percentage if you want to show uh, display the category you can show the category if you want to display a combination of data values category or percentage you can do so or you can simply show all the details labels so here i'm just going with a category and a percentage sales in each category and next you can change the color of your data 
uh, data points here uh, we have got multiple categories such as food technology medicines cosmetics and toys uh, let's change a color uh, say convert the food to orange and yellow or orange and technology to blue or a different color you can choose uh, your own favorite color you can use a combination of colors if you are a person who are who is uh, having a background in design or creative field you can use the color wheel or the color palettes if you want to use uh, otherwise just take a color of your choice if you want your uh, diagram to look appealing you can use the concept of color theory that is in practice with the designing persons it is not that difficult just simple thing just a combination of monochromatic or other color schemes this is how with the color data colors you can also change the layout or the style of this entire workspace of power bi and just go to different formatting options such as title you can change the change how your title is displayed you can increase the title size you can keep it centered you can do them some of the formatting options are just common along with uh, different charts such as the title the data colors and other things in different charts and some formatting options are unique say with the pie chart you got this option to show the label position of your text inside the pie chart outside the pie chart it was not visible in the line chart because you cannot simply write a text inside the line you have to write just above the line and so on it will be visible with the bar charts and the ring charts sometimes it won't be visible and here just uh, change the styling of the workspace just go to view and change it to dark mode if you want to have a dark mode you can choose your own style just like a powerpoint presentation will have a different color scheme you can change okay so it will automatically change the data colors of your chart as well if you choose a different color scheme otherwise just go to default normally people go with either of this black or the dark mode or the white mode the default mode okay so you can choose a uh, combination of these things try creating your own visualizations don't worry it is quite simple to start just uh, take a simple data set and start practicing okay no need to worry about anything just give it a practice if you have any doubt feel free to ask in the q a sections uh, i will be happy to help you out in this situation so just practice this thing create your own pie charts you can create multiple pie charts or a combination of different charts together to create a dashboard you are learning more about uh, creating other charts and other things in power bi till then keep learning and keep moving ahead hey welcome back friend here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating a donut chart or a ring chart in power bi so let's start with this so we have just created a pie chart in the previous lesson and here in order to create a new chart you can either create a new worksheet or you can just create multiple charts on the same worksheet so here i am just creating this ring chart over the top of uh, this pie chart next to it and just reposition it and once you are done you can just drop uh, the values into legends and values uh, the alphabetic values all the categorical data can go to the legion it will be categorized or the numerical value or the measures can go into the values so i am using order quantity in values and product name into the legion and you can just go to the format tab after you have provided the values so here just format it a little bit we can change the size of the text we can just go to the data labels and go to label styles and choose this to represent with the category and percentage form we don't want the amount to display in this ring chart you can either uh, turn the legend on and off here uh, you can use uh, all kind of categorical data but to make uh, these two charts synchronized together the pie and the ring we just want to have 
these two information name of the category and percentage as these two charts are related because on the pie chart we have used the product category and here in the ring chart we are using subcategory so food is a category that can have a different subcategory fruits vegetables milk uh, and other things in a similar way uh, we can have the categorical and subcategorical segregation so these two charts are related and sometimes if you want to represent a story or uh, something some data we may require one or more charts together to create a dashboard so in order to show the stats or the order quantity by category we have the pie chart and if you want to deep dive into uh, what particular kind of food or the subcategory of food has a maximum order quantity you can refer to the ring chart otherwise in order to have an abstract view you can have um, this pie chart or with a detailed view you can have the ring chart so this is how uh, we can go with this in the pie chart we have put the data inside the label values and now we in the ring chart we put them outside you can change the colors of the data values and align it with the pie chart say with the pie chart we have the food sub food category in the yellow orange color zone and in the subcategory you can have a similar tone in order to, to make uh, these two two charts look similar or identical otherwise you can use a different color combination because a category will have fewer entities while the subcategories may have multiple entities or the larger number of entities so the colors should be distinguishable so in the previous lessons uh, be it line chart bar chart or the simple pie chart you learned how to create these individual charts and here you are not just learning how to create a ring chart you are learning how to combine it to present a story and make it aligned so in this way we can have two different charts to have a specific detail about the information uh, you can apply more features that are powered with uh, power bi such as drill down you can add filters later on you're learning everything in this course and here it is uh, it is simple just give it a try take a data set start creating different charts try to link them here i've just taught you how to create two different charts the pie chart and the ring chart in a similar way you can also represent the subcategories uh, with the bar chart or you can also show with the line chart but i believe uh, if you have fewer entities it is better to use line chart otherwise if you have got a lot of data a lot of subcategories here say if you have 20 subcategories understanding 20 lines on the bar on the line chart would be difficult so it is better to use a ring chart there even if you have a bar chart it would be difficult to have a different legend uh, there you, you need a legend but you still you can represent you can uh, use a different kind of chart you can turn the dark mode on and off you can use a different mode if you want to convey just create a combination of different charts so this is how you create a ring chart and combine it with a dashboard try to create this thing on your own keep learning and keep practicing hello welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a tree map chart in microsoft power pi so let's start with this uh, earlier we have created a pie chart and a ring chart for categories and subcategory and uh, this time we are just going to create a tree map chart so tree map chart is a simple chart uh, which consists of rectangular Th these are represented with rectangles uh, and the area for a particular category will show you the weightage so just realign here i am just putting country column into the group and order quantity into the values so here we got two countries for our data set united states and canada so these are represented so as we can see here simply that the maximum orders were placed from united states and from from canada we have somewhat less number of orders but if you want to re, uh, realign these three charts together or 
create a relationship between the, these three charts together. Uh, no need to worry, these are automatically created. If you create a single worksheet and create multiple charts using the similar data set, it will be uh, interlinked. So if you click on a particular category, everything will be reflected. So first of all, just go to the format tab. Here you can do a few formatting. You can increase the size as we have done with other charts. Uh, you may find some other formatting options. You here, uh, just change the display unit from thousands to auto or anything. If you want to change the display unit of numbers, you can change. You can change the color. Uh, you can change the labels or uh, data labels. You can turn the legend on and off. Uh, so let's change the color here united states is represented with blue color and canada as red so just place them around uh, you can always readjust the charts as you like so you can just make this ring chart a little bit smaller and just increase the size of our tree map chart so it aligns perfectly well so here we got uh, three different charts so when we click on a particular option in any of the chart say in the tree map we click United States option uh, all other charts the pie chart and the ring chart will be updated so once we click United States as you can see uh, other charts are shrink this is a powerful animation in Power BI so we can find in the United States maximum orders were placed for the food category uh, less proportion for medicines more proportion for cosmetics 100% of the cosmetics order were placed from United States so we can see that no cosmetic order was placed from Canada and when you click over the Canada you can find Canadians tend to order more medicines than food so this is how you can drive the insights so once you click on a particular category you can either just select food and find uh, which country uh, have the maximum proportion of food or technology say just click on any of the category or subcategory uh, you can click anywhere on the chart to exit or say just select Canada here we find that uh, Canadians order less fruit as compared to uh, dairy products and vegetables and the uh, United States maximum number of food fruits were ordered from US so in the similar way this is a dummy data this is not the real data so don't worry this is not the difference between United States and Canada we are taking a subset of a uh, few peoples and this is a dummy data for practice okay so just select a particular category here we select uh, say fruits so you can see uh, United States have maximum order for fruits when compared to Canada uh, when you select medicines Canadians tend to buy more medicines than United States and this is how you drive the business insights so you have multiple data set you just don't need to read the tables and go through everything you can create multiple charts in an attractive manner so this is how it is it looks very attractive power bi makes it feel very attractive okay when you present this thing in a conference or with uh, teams or collaborators they will feel uh, amazed with this visuals so just use these charts and create amazing visuals just create a tree map and interact with other charts such as pi ring and line charts so keep learning and keep moving ahead in the previous lesson we have just created a table and a matrix and now in this lesson you're going to learn about implementing this drill down functionality on table and matrix so let's start so what is drill down simply drill down allows you to access deeper level of hierarchies of a data set visually so when we click on a particular row or column say technology uh, in table it will update the matrix only for the technology in the similar way if we choose say California uh, from the matrix it will only highlight the relevant information in table so if you want to dive deeper into a particular category or entity a particular thing and get a relevant information for that thing we can find out just keep it simple say the product category order quantity or profit details are shown in the table uh, and by default it shows the entire state or from the United States and Canada all the profit combined together in the food category cosmetics and medicines technology but 
if we select a particular state it will only update uh, information for that state in the same way if we choose a particular category it will update uh, only this particular category information in the matrix here let us create one more uh, chart this time uh, a column uh, a pie chart and just put a country into the legend and order quantity into the values so here we find a simple pie chart and we can also format it further but let it be uh, we are focused on drilling down so here we got three charts uh, these are connected together with each other because we have the similar data set and when we click say select uh, Canada it will show you the information only for the Canada both tables and matrices are updated and will show you only the information for the Canada. So this is a drill down technique based on multiple charts. Say if you select a food, it will only show the food data for US and Canada. So in the pie chart, you find this relevant information highlighted on, on the right hand side in the matrix, you find the particular information is highlighted. So if you want to focus or target on the particular category, say geographical location or a particular category product category you can just focus on that product line okay so you may update with the relevant information say if you are making a presentation with your peers uh, colleagues you have a data sales data for different states and say somebody popped up and said uh, let me focus just on California into the technology sector so you can select just uh, hold a control click control key uh, on the keyboard and the single click or you can select multiple columns or categories with the mouse and control so this way you can focus on a combination of things okay it will show you the relevant information it makes life very easy and drill down is really useful rather than creating different tables or different charts for a particular solution it may take time but here you drill down in the real time without uh, requiring to create separate charts and you can just focus on things that matter try to create this thing on your own keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a slicer in power bi so what is a slicer a slicer is a kind of filter that provides you multiple options in form of check boxes where you can select a particular option and that will be used as a filter criteria to modify your visualization here we have the simple visualization of this table and here uh, we can create a slicer and we can drop any field here so just drop country into the field or you can add states so when we have the country we got checkbox with country name and when we expand it we also get the states name so these two columns are related so when we select a particular uh, checkbox say a particular state in Canada like Ontario, Quebec, Alberta it will show you information regarding to that states only you can also select multiple columns or uh, multiple checkboxes by holding the control key on the keyboard and just single click on a particular column you can also select uh, states from other options say in the US you can select New York, New Mexico, Idaho, Illinois, uh, different states. You can use uh, this kind of a slicer to create a filter to show you information relevant to that particular state. Say uh, currently you have the sales data for all over the country in the US and Canada but when you want a specific data for a particular state uh, you can create a slicer rather than creating multiple charts it is uh, sometimes useful to create a slicer so it is a basic kind of filter you can create a slicer for the time you're learning that thing in next lesson but uh, you can also create a slicer for a variety of things say if you have uh, various kind of categories and subcategories it can be used to dive into deeper say if you have a category like technology food uh, different categories in the continent you can just divide so there is no limit to imagination and you can use a lot of things 
you can also create uh, various filters uh, advanced filters but to be useful a slicer would work in a lot of scenario you can uh, format these slicers just like you format the uh, general charts and the visualizations just go to the format tab and you will get multiple options that you can play with so this is how you create a simple slicer uh, you can also select multiple fields multiple columns you can also create multiple slicers on the same chart so whenever you create a slicer with the same data set uh, where which is used to create a visualization in your power bi dashboard the slicer get automatically linked to your chart so you can use a slicer with multiple charts or a combination of charts as well so try to create your own slicer and use it with the various charts in power bi till then keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating a date slicer in power bi in the previous lesson you learned to create a basic slicer and here just moving forward as a new slicer you can use this slicer as a filter so let us first create a slicer just go to the visualization and in the lower row you got this option so just click it so here uh, we will be dropping order date into the field so when we drop order date it will fetch uh, year month and date data and it will show you a slicer a slider by default so here you got two points the starting date and end date so you can select a range of dates by just moving two points of the slicer so if you want to select uh, say one week 10 days or any amount of day starting from say 25th march or 11th december ending date you can select or you can just click on a particular date to select a custom date okay so you got two options you can slice uh, you can slide or you can just go to a particular date year and month just like you do in any web page so it is very cool thing you can just create uh, this date a slicer and just keep it in the side of a visualization and when you're showing your presentation you can use the basic slicer as a filter for categories and date or time slicer to select a time frame so let us first also create one more data slicer you can create a data slicer in two ways just uh, go to this option and you can select date hierarchy so it will show you date in terms of check boxes arranged in a hierarchy or categories and subcategory format so you can select them just like a basic slicer so you got years quarters when you expand a quarter you will get months you can expand a month to get a, a particular date and so on so you can use a combination of a slider uh, the date hierarchy and a basic slicer to just navigate through your visualization people generally do a uh, drill down in charts uh, you can use drill down but when you require a filter or uh, particularly a slicer you can just create these things so these are very empowering thing uh, it may look like they are very simple but once you combine them with the charts that you create all the charts uh, tree map pie bar line any map chart or a combination of custom charts it will simply take your visualization to the next level with very ease say if you have a visualization for sales data across a region and your client asks uh, your friend asks simply now i want to get the sales data of texas from july 2019 to february 2021 you can just use these two slicers and navigate through the exact data a person is asking for alternatively when we use a database a query language sql can be used for performing such kind of query but here we have the power to show it visually in real time without writing any script or query so slicers are very powerful filters that can be used with your charts for real time query handling so try to create your own slicers and integrate with your charts 
to create an amazing story. So stay motivated, try to create these kind of filters, slices and charts in Power BI. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about creating a new measure or a calculated field in Power BI. We will also learn to create a got chart in Power BI. So let's start with this. Let us first create a got chart to, uh, by going to the visualization tab and let us drop uh, this profit column into the value. So it will show you the metric. So how this got chart is created, uh, we have the sum of profit and it just multiplies it by two and create this got chart. Half on the left hand side is filled. It shows that we have achieved some part of our target. So it is better to add a target line for that purpose, we'll be creating a new measure. So measure is a uh, calculated field. Uh, in Tableau, people call it calculated field. In uh, Power BI, we call it measure. Okay, so we can simply do formatting uh, by like changing colors or adding anything else. Uh, but here uh, we will be creating a measure. So with a measure, it is a numerical value, just like uh, other values. But on the right hand side, you can see into the fields category uh, where the summation sign or some sign is there that is a numerical value. And when we have the calculator symbol, it will be a custom measure or a calculated field we create. So it is very simple to create a calculated field. You have to go to the home and there you got this option to create a new measure and then we can create. So before creating uh, this new measure, let us first create some more charts like uh, a tree map chart. So because we want to perform query here uh, on a dashboard, it is better to create multiple charts. So we already know how to create a tree map chart. Just select this chart and drop few fields into the options. Say in the group, we got product category in values, we drop order quantity. So this will create a simple tree map chart. We can resize this chart or we can select an individual category. It will modify this got chart. So we want to calculate the profit into various categories such as technology, uh, in food, medicine and different categories. So this will show you the target. Just uh, resize it and we can put it somewhere else. We can also create more charts such as a map chart or you can change the values that you want to show uh, here we got the profit across different categories uh, let us just resize it and next we can create a map uh, just click this option there are three kinds of map here if we want an area map I just put a state into the location tab so the states that we have will be highlighted so here it shows the u.s united states map and we got multiple states that are available into some categories when we select a particular category or a particular state all three charts will be modified okay say so select texas uh, nevada california or any other states it will be highlighted the tree map will be updated, the got chart will be updated. So just create a new measure, just go to this home and create a new measure and you can type the code for a new measure. Just delete everything that is previously written and just start typing anything. Profit goal uh, equals to sum. Profit goal is the name of our new column, a new field. And we'll be just uh, calculating sum of profit and we'll store it okay so just write sum in the bracket brackets just write name of the sheet so sheet one and within square brackets name of the column that you want to calculate the profit and just close these brackets and put any kind of mathematical operation you want to do let us multiply it with 1.15 so here this will it will show you the target line it will be just simply the sum of profit multiplied by 1.15 so it will be 1.15 times and it will be just next to the 
sum of profit. So when you are done, just hit enter or tick option. It will simply create uh, your new measure or a calculated field. So you can see here and you can drop it into the target value of this gauge chart. And as you can see here with the profit target, we got 76K as the target line and 66K as the sum of profit that we generated. So this will add something to your God chart. So here we have created a new calculated field added to a chart. In the similar way, you can create more calculated fields that can be used for various operations in a different kind of chart. You can use it in a God chart. You can use it with map or any other chart. You can also create more uh, fields, more calculated fields such as you can calculate the sum of a uh, different column uh, just provide the sheets you can change the value say if uh, we want to multiply with 1.5 times you can divide it you can add subtract you can also perform mathematical operation on various columns say if you have the say if you want to calculate the margin you can divide the cost price and the selling price you can find this thing you can find simple interest you can find taxations uh, if you are building for corporate clients you can uh, do a tax planning or anything like that power bi can be used in a lot of scenarios and here when we clear create uh, any click on any state of the map say florida california washington new york it will simply modify the god chart and here it beautifully shows you the updated got chart and the tree map chart everything is simply modified you can also do category based filters and you can select the target uh, in which category you target achieve here we simply put the 1.15 times you can uh, add multiple calculated fields add it to different charts say for fruit category we can have 1.15 target for a different category say technology we can have 1.5 target or any other target okay it completely depends it is uh, just to show you how you can create a new measure or a calculated field based on your ideas it doesn't require an advanced coding skills it is very simple and easy to grab so just to start uh, creating measures and calculated field and use it in the visualizations with power bi Try to create this thing on your own. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about simple map and different modes for map in Power BI. So let's start with this. So here uh, we will create a simplistic map. So you got into visualization tab, just hit the globe icon this very tiny you got uh, three different kinds of map in power bi but first begin with the simple map just click this globe icon and you got various options just drop one by one columns or field into the different categories just drop country or you can also use a state or any other geographical information into the location tab then drop uh, a state into legion here we are using states then we are dropping it to the legion. You can also drop multiple categories into legions or location as well. Then uh, we will drop order quantity into the size. And we can also place uh, some other informations into different things. So here it is. Uh, so we got a simple map for United States and Canada. And you can see small and big bubbles emerging on different states. Okay, so these are the different states, and let us just define. So these are the uh, these bubbles represent uh, where we got some information or data about order quantity or profit or something is there in a different state. Say, uh, and you can increase the size. Uh, you can just go to the bubble and increase the size so the impression of the bubble will be in that way so if you want an average looking bubble you can increase it or if you want a small you can decrease it you can also change the color of your bubbles okay 
So the size is based on order quantity. So the maximum number of orders placed from a different state, it will be represented. So here we can see in North Carolina, we got large number of orders. Okay, North Carolina, Ontario in Canada, we got larger quantity and we got a smaller quantity in states like uh, Nevada, Wisconsin, we got less order. So the size of bubble matters. If you change the order quantity with profit or sales data, it will reflect with that thing. Okay, so here we are considering order quantity and everything is colored in blue in the same color. You could add a different color and you can add something to the tooltip, say profit into tooltip. If you drop, you can change the color mode map style from aerial to black or to dark mode to light gray scale and the road. By default, it was set to the road type. You can turn, turn it to dark mode, uh, gray scale, aerial geographical map. If you want to show a uh, forest, uh, mountains, oceans, seas, lakes, all the geographical things, physical map, you can use this aerial map. If you want to add uh, roads and the landmarks, you can use the road, you can use the gray scale. If you want to have this night vision kind of a look, then you can use the dark map. So these are the different map styles that you can use. So Power BI not just provide you a simple kind of map. You can use a complex variety of map. You can also use Arc, GIS or other uh, informations, but we have to import your data in that format. So for the regular format, you have this map. So for using map, your internet connectivity should be turned on because if you are uh, viewing this thing offline, it has to load a uh, map from online sources. Okay, so just uh, make your Power BI connected to the internet. Okay, so this is how you create a simple map in Power BI. Uh, just take any data set that has some geographical information. You don't need latitude and long longitude. You just need simple name of states, countries, territories, cities, and it will be reflected to the, your map. So just try to create uh, this map chart using different modes. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Welcome back. Now moving forward with the scatter plot that we have created previously. Uh, we have added multiple dimension and now we can also change the value of X axis to show from sum to average. Uh, so right now uh, x axis is showing us the average of the order quantity. We can change it to median, variance, uh, sum, divergence or different value, uh, count. But let us just stick to average. Uh, so x axis is showing us the average of order quantity whereas y axis is showing us the sum of order quantity. You can change uh, any of these values or you can use a different measure or you can also create a custom measure or a calculated field that can be used as an axis or a parameter. So we have these things and now it's time to just simply add something to the play axis. Say if we add order date to the play axis, so we will be able to animate this scatter plot like this. So when we add something to the play axis, it should be time or uh, simply time or date information and it can be used for adding a replay. You can also change it to the date hierarchy. So it will show you the year basis or month based data trends. Okay, change of the value. So you have to just hit the play button or the pause when you want. So you can see the bubbles are moving from different values, X and Y axis, average of quantity and more. And you can also see the size of the bubble changing. So you can see the technology has order quantity increasing over time or in the similar way for the fruits or vegetables. You can identify the trends. Okay, so you can also select a particular bubble, just click on it. So it will draw a line. So in that way, you will be able to identify the pattern or how the data bubble is changing in a different category. So if you want to uh, see the trend in the charger and the vegetable or laptop category, 
laptop category you can find the sales order quantity of the laptop has decreased okay although the average of the order quantity increased over time but uh, the size and the profit of the order quantity reduced so profit is represented with the size of the bubble so the size of bubble shrink uh, but the number of order quantity the average number of order quantity increased over time so in this way you can identify different kinds of trend you can have a data analysis analytics over time and a scatter plot with an play axis will allow you to show multiple dimensions in the same data at the same time uh, very easily and effectively so this is how you can create an advanced scatter plot and add a loop playback option here you can change it to month if you have month data you you can add the hourly data or the weekly information or anything like that so if you change the values you will see the trends you can add the state data so you can find the average order quantity trend based on the states so in some states we got order in some years and sometimes we don't get so the bubble change rapidly okay a scatter plot plot is highly useful when you have multiple categories and a large volume of data to show you the trend very briefly and very precisely in a compressed manner so you have the profit you have the order quantity you have the product category product name order date multiple dimensions that you can show in a single chart it makes a scatter plot or animated scatter plot very different from other charts whereas in other charts you need uh, some multiple charts to sh show a complete insight a scatter plot allows you to show the insights very easily in single chart you can it can allow you to say the storytelling behind how this thing is done so it is very powerful way of presenting ideas it can be used in a wide range of scenarios uh, so if you are pursuing a career in business intelligence and data inside data science and data analytics you should definitely try this chart out you should try to create a scatter plot and animation keep learning and keep moving ahead hi there welcome to this lesson we are going to learn about power query in microsoft power bi so let's start with this so here we just need to get our data uh, so we'll click on get data and locate a particular data source so here we are using excel file you can use csv database anything like that any data source and once you have imported just select the sheet that you want to import you could import multiple worksheets but for the meantime just take one sheet for example and you don't need to load this if you have to perform power query operations you have to just click on the transform option so that you can perform etl extract transform load operations so the query editor is a different window on itself it is different from uh, the power bi dashboard so you can switch between these tools very easily okay so this is the editor that allows you to edit everything so you got multiple columns multiple rows and here just let start with a row deletion so here we got first row with null values it could be possible because uh, we have an excel file and just go to home and select uh, remove top rows and just provide number of rows that you want to delete so if you provide one it will remove the first row from the top if you provide three five ten it will remove 10 rows from the top in the same order so in the similar way you can also delete rows from bottom rows uh, or from the end and you can perform the same operations so this is the simplest and basic operations that you can perform power query will allow powerful editing options both in excel as well as power bi so if you're comfortable with ms excel you can continue these operations there as well if you're comfortable with power bi you could continue here it provides a wide range of options wide range of features that you can perform on your data set so here uh, we have deleted top rows or bottom rows in the similar way you can also 
perform various operations like column, split, replace column values and much more. So on the right hand side you got various applied steps. So it will show you the history of steps that you perform. If you want to remove it you can just click on the cross icon and it will remove the step you perform. So here if we remove the last step it will be cancelled out. So it will perform action just like you undo anything. Okay so you can do this. So as we undo we can just perform the same step once more time just remove the rows so if you by mistake uh, perform certain operations that you don't want to reflect you can just revert back to the previous state so this is how your dashboard looks like so on the top side you got multiple uh, tabs the basic is home tab by default you can go to transform and add columns and various options as well it got advanced functionalities and you can generally perform any kind of power query operation with the help of few clicks so it makes very easily and intuitive for anyone else so now just go to split column uh, you can find a split column here just next to remove rows and here just click on uh, by delimiter so if you want to split a single column into two or three different columns you can do so so here it could be multiple delimiters based on what the columns have is split so here we got the column and where uh, we got something like uh, if you can provide a character you can provide a space tab comma anything you can just do that thing but here we are going to split with a delimiter hyphen or dash and we will split at each occurrence of the delimiter so here we got single occurrence of a delimiter and we can just remove it so here uh, it has extracted some values from one column and created two different columns it, this is called a split operation similar kind of operations can be performed on databases uh, using SQL queries uh, you can perform such operations using Python on big data and here we are performing the operation on a data set that is in Excel or CSV using Power Query so if you want to revert back to the previous state you can easily revert back by just going to the applied steps and just click on the cross icon it will just nullify so previously we got two column split and when we revert back three steps behind we got the same original column you can split by once more or you can perform any number of operations multiple times so here uh, say maybe if you uh, delimit it with a different character uh, it will be better to revert back to the original state and perform so once you are done with all the edits you have to go to home close and apply so it will just save your uh, performance uh, the operations that you performed in the power query and it will apply in the dashboard so here after it has been applied you can find these columns in the fields category in the main power bi dashboard and you can create any kind of chart visualization chart for dashboard creation or report generation so here I'll just create a simple table using two columns the product id and product id number we have split these two columns and we are using these two columns to show uh, previously they were in a single column and using certain operations we have performed row deletion as well as column split so just try to practice these things in power query and power bi or excel keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about replacing various column values in power bi using power query so let's start with this uh, currently we are in the power bi dashboard and here we have to first uh, get our data source uh, for which we have to click on get data and we will fetch the data uh, we are using excel file so just locate to the file that you want to import and hit ok so just select the table that you want to edit and just go to transform data 
otherwise you can click to load if you don't want to perform query editing okay so here are uh, what is the purpose of replacing various columns say if you have a big spreadsheet that has say 50,000 records and each record consists of a lot of information so if you want to if you have to edit some of these data say 1000 records it would be very time taking approach to one by one perform these things so it will be better to optimize this thing using power query so it will automate everything based on certain logic so power query allows you to perform various logical operations so for that we will go to the co country column and here we got uh, two countries united states of america and canada so we have to just right click here and we will replace some of these values okay so just right click here you will get multiple options just select replace values and in the replace values uh, you can replace anything with a different thing so here uh, we have united states of america and let us replace it with usa so united states of america will be a big entity and if you have a lot of columns it will consume a lot of data on your memory so if you want to optimize this thing you can just replace it with usa and just place it here so value in text will be united states of america and replace with will be usa so hit ok and we can find here uh, it has been replaced with usa very easily all the data relevant information relevant values uh, in our spreadsheet has been replaced very easily with a matter of few clicks so this is the power of power query so if you want to perform these operations multiple times you can do this so here we got usa and we can replace it with United States. So earlier we have United States of America, just omit uh, the last word, and here we have just United States. So USA will be a lot of short form, and here we can easily do this thing. You can replace just anything. You can replace blue with red, red with blue, anything, any number, any character, anything. Say if you have some values like 20 million so if you want to replace million with multiple zeros you can do it okay so you can perform similar kind of operations so just try to imagine this thing you will learn more about what you can do uh, by practicing it so just take a data set open the power query uh, query editor and just start performing certain operations you already know how to delete some rows from top or bottom you also know how to perform column split splitting one column into multiple columns or joining them together you also know how to replace various values in the column and such things so just give it a try keep practicing keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about installing python packages for data science in power bi so let's start with this so once you have a power bi downloaded on your computer or you can use an online installer uh, the next step is to ensure that you have all the python packages required for data science pre-installed so just go to file options and settings and options here you just move to python scripting tab and just select these two options you have to detect the python home directory if python is already installed on your computer you can find it into uh, this pc c system 32 for windows and for mac and linux uh, with its respective directories and also you have to uh, select the python ide uh, to detect but uh, it is set to default os program uh, in my settings uh, you can define a different id uh, so if you don't have a python installed you should uh, go to the python.org website and you can simply download the python package the latest one and just provide its path in the uh, home directory settings in power bi next step is to uh, open the command line interface and just execute three different commands first for installing pandas then for matplotlib and then for seaborn 
so just type pi py minus m pip install pandas so this will install the pandas file and before that you can make sure that the python is already installed on your system or not you can run the python command in the directory where it is so for uh, us uh, the directory is c users and then the username so currently um, in the directory within the python folder uh, you can run it uh, in the user directory as well so i already have the pandas library installed but if you don't have this is the way you can install it for those who don't know how to install so just run these three commands the first syntax is similar pi minus m pip install and then you have to just provide pandas matplotlib and seaborn in the same way you can also download other file libraries uh, required in the python and even if you have uh, already installed matplotlib or seaborn you can update it okay it will tell you uh, whether it is installed or not installed or it is outdated it will simply update it so this will be very easy to go uh, technique rather than just uh, using a gui gui method uh, it is very simple to do so once these libraries are installed you just need to uh, refresh your uh, power bi and you can just click on python visualization option so this way you can create a visualization for python and here uh, you have to just drag into the columns or fields from the table and start coding so you will be learning how to write python course to create visualization charts in power bi in the coming lessons uh, just make sure everything is installed and set into the place to before moving to writing scripting if you are done with this just uh, hit the next lessons or if you have any doubt just try to rectify this thing keep learning hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a line chart using matplotlib in power bi so let's start with this so first we just need to get our data source for that you just need to go to the get data and you can choose a various data source currently i'm importing excel file so i will navigate through the excel file and here you got a worksheet just check the sheet that you want to import you may have multiple worksheets in different data sources currently i have one this thing and next uh, you just need to click on this python icon in the visualization panel uh, this is the python image that i have added don't worry um, just put it aside and here we just created a chart for python so just like you create a bar chart pie chart in the same way you can create a python chart so python chart will allow you to provide create a, a code for generating a chart so here just drop two values we take uh, the average values and site visitors and drop it into the values and next uh, some ran, some code is generated so these are the comments so you can either remove it and write it from fresh or you can continue with anywhere you want so once you're done just write a simple code to create a simple chart so line chart is most basic chart so just uh, first import this thing uh, write import matplotlib dot pyplot as a variable name uh, and provide a variable name say k1 you can write anything else so here this will import the matplotlib library and specifically pyplot function that we can use it so just provide a variable name that we can use you can write anything say i am writing k1 so just write k1 dot plot plot is a function here in matplotlib it will take the values of uh, data source data fields so just write data set dot site visitor so site visitors is a column in our spreadsheet or in a table and we will use it as a axis and just write comma and write data set dot average time spent so you may have two different uh, data columns data field that can be provided as x and y axis and once you are done just write k1 dot show open and close brackets 
so it will generate a chart so once you're done just hit the run icon here you can execute it uh, and don't forget to remove go to values and change it to don't summarize by default uh, the column values are summed together are calculated but you don't want it them to be summarized and you because you want each individual points on the chart so this way we can have if you invert the order of uh, fields say if you put uh, average time is spent before then uh, site visitors it will change the access for x and y axis okay so you, you may be careful here because the chart that you want if you want any particular field to be x axis you can create it like that okay so take care of uh, the order of providing the data sets and here it is you can expand this chart you can scale it and you can go to the format tab where you can format this chart okay you can change the size of the title you can increase it its value so it may be more visible you can align it to the center of the, the screen you can change the font color uh, you may change the font type you can also change the title that is written you can change it you just write anything your name anything that you want so you got various options to customize this chart you can change the color of appearance you can change the color of line you can uh, rename this accesses and you can create a various chart this way so with the format tab you can format any of the chart be it with a python or you can have in the different uh, charts in power bi so these allow you to customize you can change the color of your background for the text and this is it so we have we learned how to just create a simple line chart using matplotlib so the process is same you just need to follow it uh, you may import a data set put some of the columns that you want into the values option and once it is passed to the values you can just start writing your code so this is simple three line of code or it, it can be a single one line of code import is common Im importing a matplotlib library is a very common thing so if you don't count it it is just a single line of code so a single line of python code can generate amazing charts and you will learn how you can generate more charts in a different advanced charts because power bi provides you a limited set of charts but if you want to customize your data uh, with the power of a programming language that is r or python you can easily maneuver this thing and you can create uh, most interestingly a custom chart that is not provided here in the cporn and the matplot library you got tremendous amount of visualization charts that you can use so if you're learning data science machine learning uh, business intelligence anything anything regarding uh, python power bi or such thing you can just combine these two powerful things and create amazing visualizations so keep learning and keep moving ahead. You will be learning more in the coming lessons. Hey, welcome back friend. In the previous lesson, you learned how to create a line chart in Power BI using matplotlib. And here we can just convert this line chart into a different chart, say a scatter plot or a dashed line chart. Or you can combine it to create a variety of charts. So just modify this chart. Uh, here we have a zigzag line chart uh, based on the data set that you use you can create a different kind of line chart so we have just modified this data set a little bit so find this kind of chart so just add some line so first we want to add some labels to x and y axis so if you want to add some label to x axis the code will be simple just use a variable k1 dot x label uh, within the brackets just write average time spent on the site uh, here because I want to display it on the screen on the x-axis you can write anything say this is x-axis anything you want and in the same way you can put the y label as well uh, within the quotes 
whatever you like uh, right will be appeared on the screen so here I uh, just put X and Y label uh, on the screen say Y label is side visitors per minute and X axis is average time is spent on a site so this is a website data where uh, we have a range of data so this kind of zigzag line chart is formed we can create a scatter plot or a different chart as well so by default it is continuous line chart okay uh, you can go to the format tab to customize this chart as well as the background okay so just click the chart and go to the format tab if you want to customize anything otherwise just leave it uh, you may change some variables so just go to the plot function and here after the data set you take just write a comma and within single quotes uh, just write few things say if you write R uh, this line will change to red color okay R is small r don't write capital just write a small r if you write Y it will change to yellow color if you write G it will change to green color so these are the labels that you can use so if you want to convert the color of your chart you can convert this will not just work in this line chart it will work on any kind of chart that you use uh, using the matplotlib function if you just write V it will change to simple um, triangle or dots on the screen a small dot if you change it to a different thing it will change if you write O it will change to a scatter plot this will represent points okay if you write double dash it will create a dashed line not a continuous line dashed line and if you write O dash dash it will create a scatter plot with a dashed line if you write a variable name say G G is a color green and just write double dash it will change it to green dashed line if you put R dash dash just put color code before dash symbol okay so first you need to define the color then you can define how it will be appearing if you write simple O it will convert to a scatter plot okay so a scatter plot will show you the distribution of the points on the chart so each point will be represented in that way and you can identify the pattern or the outlier if you want line chart as well as a scatter plot you can combine it very easily just write double dash after O so don't get confused just experiment with a range of variables and you can customize these charts okay so sometimes you want this thing to appear uh, so because the data science is not just about creating charts using python or power bi you want to narrate some story okay so you may design this chart if you are from someone from designing background or even if you're not from designing background you may want your chart to appeal nice decent you wear uh, clothes that you like uh, everyone is fashionable and not everyone is a fashion designer but people wear a fashionable clothes will have uh, different things so just try to decorate your charts okay for decoration purpose you may require to customize and for customization you may learn more uh, functions and options here so you learn how to create a dash line chart just don't uh, when others are creating simple line chart you can create a dash line you can combine a scatter plot as well as dash line you can use a combination of colors uh, you can express uh, a different custom chart as well so just dive deeper into this just ask question uh, why everything is set to root default mode how I can customize it further so just try to customize everything and try to create your own charts uh, use a variety of data set and just keep building this thing so here it is you learned how to create three or four different kinds of chart you can use the format painter as well so once you created a customized chart you can copy the format and paste it under a different chart in power bi as well so you may use the power of both things python as well as power bi so empower your data science project keep learning keep moving hello friends and welcome back in this part of the series i'm going to use azure cognitive service computer vision using python language here in this part of the series, we are going to discuss many operations like analyzing an image, 
getting subject domain list analyze our image by domain get text description they get handwritten text from image so for this we will require python language the endpoint url and the credentials uh, like keys okay so first of all i'm going to copy um copy this here three packages we require uh, computer vision client feed and uh, visual feature types and cognitive service credentials so first of all i'm going to create a file write abcd.py write any name and dot py means a python file open this python file in your idle ide that is uh, id for python environment now now open it is with idle paste the content which you have copied from the documentation site copy it here okay um, it will asking for your endpoint and key which i'm going to write afterwards first of all i'm going to analyze an image uh, you can also analyze image by two methods either providing the link of image which is already there in internet or you can also uh, add the your local directory location where the image is there okay in my previous video i have already copied the endpoint url so copy this endpoint url and paste it here under single quotes and in key also i am put it under single quotes because they are considered as a strings now save this file abcd.py and open your command prompt in the location where your file resides write python abcd.py wait for a while and uh, we'll get the results in json format actually we're going to analyze your image and give the the details of the image like uh, it's showing the property like buildings are there outdoor streets are there let me open this image just copy this url and uh, open it into your new tab this is an image of Times Square of USA. So it's showing uh, it is a city. There's pe people are there, buildings are there, outdoors are there. For each of them, there's a confidence scores. Okay, like 99 for building, people, night, crowd, casino, downtown. These are the names and also providing this uh, confidence score for it. So this is how you can use this analyze uh, feature. Now, if you want to get a subject domain list, copy this and uh, open your Python file and paste this. Remove this print one if you wish. Save this and uh, again run the python abcd.py. So these are the information firstly it was giving uh, was analyze the image after it showing the um, categories like landmarks outdoor peoples let me remove this so that you can understand easily and after removing it just again save this and again run the script the python script so it's showing uh, additional properties like celebrities okay then uh, names okay so this is how you can use this subject domain list okay till now i have uh, done analyze the image get the subject domain list now i'm going to analyze an image by providing the domain by default so just copy it here and remove this thing when this url also we will not require this and paste the thing like providing the domain, providing the URL and languages in which you want uh, the result. Open this image into new tab, run the Python script again. So it's showing the Eiffel Tower with a percentage 97%. So it is an image which we have analyzed right now. This Eiffel Tower. Okay. by providing the domain exact only uh, landmarks which showing the limited information we can provide lot of domains are there
now copy this this is an image for golden gate bridge in san francisco open into your new tab yeah this is image for golden bridge now i'm going to copy this script and paste it in my python script open your ide remove this all this content and paste it again and run the script again so it's showing a train crossing golden gate bridge over a body of water okay and it is a large bridge over a body of water with the golden gates bridge in the background uh, so these are the information and that this model is extracting from this image of this golden gate bridge of san francisco if you want to now i'm going to perform uh, another thing uh, like to extract the text from my image this is our image where you can see sorry have a nice day oops see you again this is some text so now i'm what i'm going to do i'm just going to extract these images so copy this whole thing because we need to import uh, text recognition and as well as text operations so you have to copy all the things copy all the things and open your python ide remove this and paste it here save the file and again run the script in your command prompt so it will going to extract the text from your image like it will show sorry have a nice day with its confidence scores okay let's see sorry it's also showing the coordinates also then for have a because it, it is written in a single line and nice day is written in another line so it's showing a different categories now see you soon bye this is all the coordinates which uh, of the particular text of a particular statement so this is how you can extract a text from an image now if you want to generate thumbnail you must install this pillow so copy this pip now first of all you have to copy this pillow pip install pillow To generate a thumbnail image you have to provide the url of your image either it can be online or it can be a local directory it will generate a thumbnail of your image a small size image which you can use anywhere okay it is already installed in my computer that's below requirement already satisfied so it is not going to install it again so remove this all things and uh, copy this and paste it here and the thumbnail.jpg will be created and now run the script python abcd.py now it will generate uh, it already generated my uh, thumbnail it will be a small image very small image okay of the this golden gate bridge of san francisco because in the url i provided the link of this golden gate bridge copy this url to show you again this is an image of which uh, i have generated the thumbnail this small size image as you can see it is very very small and if you zoom it the the quality of image will be get degraded so this is how i have used this computer vision to analyze an image firstly then get the domain list after getting the domain list i have uh, analyzed image by providing the particular specified domains then generating the thumbnails pro extracting the text from your image even it can also identify the handwritten text also so this is all about uh, computer vision uh, i have used python language you can use the rest api 
or you can use dot net sdk i hope you understand so for till now keep learning and keep exploring dear friends and welcome back now in this part i am going to show you that how you can create a community service of computer vision so here we go as you can see in the there is lot of community services available now i'm going to choose this computer uh, com computer vision and uh, now click on create this from using this vision you can generate tags for go ahead and for sentence description of your image print the text from image handwritten recognize the celebrities and landmarks there are many operation you can do from this service so just click create and once you are successfully create your and uh, this community service you can do these operations so now write the name of your resource like computer vision this name is already available so you have to write something different now click free trial yeah this is available now in, I click in location choose the, your location now in the pricing tier choose the f0 okay there's two are available f0 and s1 f0 is free now select the resource group if you create it now click on create now to validate all the settings which you have did right now and uh, after it it will going to create this computer vision service now after it i'm going to perform each of the operations so it is so it is open uh, this computer vision documentation this provides the information about this service by detecting the face and tag visual features etc you can have quick starts for analyze the remote image for local image so i'm going to use a local image using python language and you, you can also have dot net sdk also and there's an option for python sdk okay so and this python it is now successfully deployed click on go to resource click ok here now yeah quick start for this service is open up now you can click on overview to get the more detailed information of this service so you will find the resource group name the status is active the location the subscriptions the tags the pricing tier now inside this quick start which i which i'm going to do for local image using python language okay so copy this endpoint url because in future we will require this and copy the access key because it is also important So copy this Okay Hello friends and welcome back in this video I'm going to show you how you can create text analytic services So without any wasting time just go just click here create and it will open the configuration uh, page where you have to provide the information regarding to, uh, for the service so write the name of your service for your text analytics and then choose the subscriptions then choose the location there are a lot of locations available you can choose any of them 
like Australia, East, Brazil, South, Central US, East US. Now select the price tier. F0 is for free. So I'm going to select this F0. And if you want to create your resource group, you can create here if you want to select existing one. The both the options is there. You can opt any of them. Just click validate and uh, it will validate it. once it validation is completed then it will go to another step that is deployment and then the deployment after the deployment of your the service it will create all the related items for this service okay and yeah deployment succeeded successfully now if you want to go to resource you can click go to resource to the that resource group where your this community service of tax analytics is there and uh, it is completed within nine seconds as you can see on my screen it is successfully deployed your deployment is completed now here is the option for inputs outputs and templates are there you can choose any of them the deployment details is there the starting time is there duration is there now click here test analytics the resource which you have created right now and here it is a quick start where you will get your keys your documentations and many more information regarding this service okay so i hope you understand how you can create your text analytics service of cognitive service of microsoft azure so in overview section you will get more details the resource group name the status the uh, subscription id if you want to add tag so that you can easily visualize in billy section you can go from there under resource management key section you will find the keys hello friends and welcome back in my previous lecture i have shown you that how you can create this text analytics quantity service in this video i am going to perform four operations regarding this quantity service first one is sentiment analysis Second one, key phrase extraction, third is language detection, and the last one, name entity recognition. So here we go without any wasting time. I'm going to start it. This is my overview section. First of all, copy the endpoint URL because it will require in future and the access key. So copy this, open your notepad and paste it here. This endpoint URL, then click on show access key. You will get two keys you can use any of them and also you can regenerate also so i'm going to copy this first key and copy it here okay now open the quick start under resource management where you will get a lot of documentation regarding this coordinated service and also many interesting information regarding this so here you will find documentation open a new tab And uh, this text analytics is a community service uh, sponsored by uh, Microsoft Azure, which provides advanced natural language processing over raw text. Okay, this is the four main function which I discussed to you before: key uh, sentiment analysis, key phrase extraction, language detection, name entity recognition. Now, in Quick Start, you will find many languages: C Sharp, Go, Java, Node.js, PHP, Python, Ruby. I'm going to opt this Node.js one and perform these four operations so first of all i'm going to perform this detect a language so you need to create your .js file and this is the script which i'm going to follow it so first of all create a new file and name detect.js and remove and open this into your favorite editor and copy the uh, paste the content which you are copying from um, documentation remove this all comments this one also now in place of access key you have to write your own access key okay and uh, also check your uri this is for chinese literals it is unable to display now enter your key here open your notepad where you paste that key now paste it here also check the location which you have chosen in this case it is chosen west us but our location is east us so 
and the version is also different uh, my version is 2.0 and it is 2.1 here so change the version first to 2.0 and uh, change the location to east us okay and uh, now save this file okay https by default is already in the package so i'm not going to install it if you don't have you have to write mp install https okay now write node detect.js it will identify the language and yes as you can see it identifies the language for id1 it is english for id2 it is spanish it's ISO name is ES and for the ID3 it's unknown because it didn't identify that Chinese literals so I'm going to replace this bogus symbol with a Chinese uh, with any other language okay let me open this Chrome and uh, just write English to German okay let me take a simple example copy that sentence and it will convert into your translate your text into german okay so this is a document written in german now now copy this german uh, literals and paste it over your notepad into your detect.js file okay now save this file again and run this script again okay so in place of this unknown it will going to show you the german and its ISO name is DE and the score is showing 1 it means it's, it is 100% sure that the language is showing it it is a German okay so this is how we can use this detect um, test analytics service for detecting a language Hello friends and welcome back. In my previous lecture, I have shown you one of the functions of text analytics that is uh, detecting a language. Now in this part, I'm going to show you that how you, can, you analyze a sentiment. So here we go. The, the sentiment and this is API and this is the script and the output will look like this. Okay, let me check it out. This is a sample text. And for each sample text, there it is providing the score and specify the ID. If the it is closer to 1.0, it means it is a positive. If it is closer to zero, it means it is a negative. Okay, now copy this. Copy this uh, script and open your notepad to paste it. And you have to use again your access key and the endpoint URL. That's why I have copied it before. Now open your new notepad. Write sentiment.js and inside it just paste the content which you have copied right now. Okay again I'm going to remove all the comments this one also now write your access key this is a, a sample a sentence you can also change it first one is written in English and another one is written uh, in French I think okay now I'm going to write my own sentence I it was a bad experience let me see it will give a score which are closer to zero or not okay in place of yes you have to write en Now copy this access key and paste here 
and change this west us to east because our location is east us now write node sentiment.js and the spelling is mistake sentiment.js and again open the command prompt this is the key dot js and enter the yeah the document showing id 1 96 19 and for id 2 it's showing 43 percent closer a uh, 0.43 it is closer to 0 it means it is a negative sentence and 0.96 it is closer to 1 it means it is a positive sentence okay let me show you sentence again i really enjoy the new xbox one s it has a clean look it, it shows it is a positive type, type sentence and for this id2 it was a really bad experience it's showing a negative thing that's why it is much closer to zero okay keep in mind that uh, if it is closer to one it is a positive sentence if it is a closer to zero it is a negative sentence okay let me write first save this file and let me check the score for this negative sentence it is again showing the same it means the level of uh, this sentence and the previous sentence is equal so this is all about a sentiment analysis uh, another function of text analytics now i am going to perform another function hello friends and welcome back till now i have shown you two functions of text analytics one is sentiment and analysis and the second one is language detection now in this part i'm going to show you the extract key phrases so let's start so first of all you have to create a file where you, you have to if you want to implement this entity key phrase so copy this content let me show you how this works I really enjoy the expo one x so it will find the entity from here okay from a sentence now i'm going to create a new file write key phrases dot js okay now open this in notepad and copy the content paste the content now remove this all again and write your access key write your access key and change the location from west us to east us okay now instead of west just write east East US okay now change the version also to 2.0 and uh, save this file let me show you the text I really enjoy the new Xbox One S it has a clean look 4k HDR resolution it, it is affordable and the other language uh, in ES which means Spanish and the last one is in, again English the Grand Hotel is a new hotel in the center of Seattle okay so it will find uh, key phrases from the sentence run the program writing note key phrase dot js for id1 it find the key phrases like sdi resolution new xbox clean look these are main key terms and for three new hotel grand hotel review center of seattle seattle is a place name classes decoration stars so these are some key phrases it extract from the uh, sentence okay so at the time of uh, when you create a chatbot if a customer writes such sentence then it will going to find the entity from here and for from entity it will detect the intention of the user and give it according to response so th this is how you can use entity key phrase 
Hello friends and welcome back. Now I'm going to perform the last function to identify the linked entities. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to copy this. This is the result, how it will look like after executing this program. Okay. Now copy this. This is for identify linked entities. Now open your notepad. First of all, create a new file. Write identify.js. Open this and paste the content. Copy this key. Enter here and change the location to East US. Okay, now save this and just write node identify.js. Identify.js. Now it will go into give the result in JSON format. So for ID one, the name is Microsoft. Its Wikipedia score is this much. And Microsoft is a company. It is a text. So for it, the result is. Microsoft Okay, it's Wikipedia score is how this much it's entity type score text is Microsoft Wikipedia URLs also provided the Bing ID is also provided and the type is already uh, Showing that is uh, organization. Okay now technology company it means uh, a type of organization, okay now open copy the link which we have get from the script this opens the microsoft wikipedia page okay nine technology company this is the url which we have get from the script as you can see technology company wiki technology company wiki technology company so this is how you can identify the entities so the, the in this way you can use your text analytic analytics service in and uh, perform four operations for python is also there for ruby is also there you can do any of them i hope you understand all the four operations of this text analytics in my next video i'm going to do some more cognitive services for detecting language for analyze sentiments this all is for given for python okay in tutorials you will get more interesting projects